Yeah, hi, folks. My name is Stuart Russell, and I am a partner with Universal Tennis Management. And I'm going to do a quick PowerPoint presentation on a unique feature that I implemented not that long ago um, with a bunch of my high-level or high-performance students, those that aspire to help, you know, or looking for some guidance on how I feel that can help them navigate through a competitive match or a competitive, you know, series of matches and deal with some of the adversity that comes along with it in real time. Um, many of the students that I work with um, already have a fairly comprehensive toolbox uh, that they're able to, you know, their skill sets are fairly strong physically, technically, but they're looking for me to help them understand in real time how they can best navigate through a competitive match, you know, mentally, for lack of better terms. So I know a lot has been made recently about high level tennis players and whether they should be coaching aloud during matches and whatnot. And I think if we can front side this, this is more of instead of being visual, like a, a you know, visually watching and videotaping, which I'm a firm believer in, this is more of an auditory type of an idea so that I can blend the two. They uh they can listen to themselves as to what they're actually thinking in real time rather than having what a coach, you know, a coach is done watching a kid play a match and then what were you thinking in this scenario? This is them actually in a in a microphone setting, me blending what what's actually going on and what they're actually thinking in real time. And before you think that, you know, there's a bias, they know they're being on a microphone. Uh, so therefore it's a control bias that they might not act the same. The majority of the kids that I'm working with actually really want or looking for guidance in the, as far as this aspect of their tennis game. So they are actually being truthful on, uh, and this is what they're thinking when they're playing. So I'm going to go through it real quick. Uh, I'm going to try and stay, you know, under 10 minutes here or so on this presentation. Uh, I'm going to pop back and forth with a couple of videos on how it works. And some of the, some of the PowerPoint presentation, you know, bullet points that I like to get across. Um, right here is one. I think too much co tennis coaching is done post uh, post mistake or post occurrence. Kid makes a mistake or a junior makes a mistake, and you either tell them something about their decision making or something technically they needed wrong. So I'm a firm believer in maybe having a, more of a pre-planned idea, um, telling themselves what they can be doing better in real time rather than forecasting what not to do. Um, and if you're constantly being corrected, I, I use the analogy, if you're in school and you keep on getting a math problem wrong, at some point, if you swear you think you're solving it right, you'd probably go up and ask the teacher, you know, is, is there some... Do you have any tools or any any idea of how I can get this better? Because I swear I feel like I'm getting it right, and I keep on getting it wrong when you grade my paper. So I, I like to use the analogy even of pre-planning um, and pre-thinking what can go better rather than obviously, hey, you missed this ball because you, you, know, you need more spin. You, you pulled off too soon. The proverbial we've heard all along, the more kids keep on t telling themselves not to double fault, there's probably a better occurrence because they're already forecasting a negative outcome that they might double fault. So telling themselves what to do versus what not to do is a very important feature that I'd like to see a lot of coaches implement, you know, or balance, you know, balancing it out during um, when communicating with their students. The majority of the tennis players that play at the next level, I feel, look very composed. They're very neutral. They uh, Their self-talk must be fairly positive. They look very composed on a tennis court. Their body language is upright. They feel like they look like they're in control of their environment rather than th things getting, you know, uh, and I would highly recommend that you take this approach on your self-talk and, and making sure that you look neutral and composed just for what I call a poker face. You don't want to show your opponent that, hey, they're getting under your skin. Um Topic three I discuss is called proactive versus reactive. I think the majority of tennis Obviously, every stroke but your serve, you're kind of reacting to your opponent. But I think with your verbal triggers, you can do a little bit better job of, you know, giving things 
or giving verbal triggers to yourself, words like, hey, come on, you got this, a little bit more positive or neutral undertone rather than always reprimanding yourself when you're done making a mistake. Um, and then the, the four types of feedback that I discuss, and, and I'm going to show you a little bit of a short little video here in a minute, that um, the four types of feedback that the studies on a positive, negative, specific, or nothing at all. I find that a lot of people that when they're actually feeling like they're in a solid headspace during a match are not really saying that much at all in real time. And I'm finding with by using them when they're mic'd up, they're not saying a whole lot because they feel comfortable with what's going on. It's a matter of when they deal with some negative outcomes or negative scenarios, how can they pick themselves up? In you know, 25 seconds in between points, I'm fine with them being upset, maybe reprimanding themselves, but what are you going to do to reset, reassess, and then refocus prior to the next point beginning? Uh, I'm going to jump to a little video as um, on, the, on what I'm actually talking about here. There's a couple of students, one's at uh, Georgia College, Lucy Kim, and another girl, Mackenzie Leopold, at Georgia Southern, both very competitive tennis players. And this is the way it works. Basically, I have the microphone. They are also being videotaped, a series of points or even a set. And they both have are wearing microphones. And I'm just going to play a couple of short little points to give you an illustration of what we're talking about. Okay. Glad to start right here. Talk to you. So there you have Lucy, and this is kind of before we started talking about this and we watched the videotape and then I had her with the microphone on. She's telling herself that she pulled away from it. Now, I know it sounds like it's in a similar fashion, but cause and effect. I have her now actually saying, hey, stay coiled longer or stay turned longer. Similar type of what one... One just sounds negative. You could hear the tone in the voice. It's like, hey, I'm for already forecasting that I'm going to pull away from it. And therefore, I still pulled away from it. And I'm just mad at myself almost. Whereas next series of points that I'm going to play, you just hear a difference in the tone in which Mackenzie's just talking to herself while she's playing points. You notice Mackenzie acknowledging that, hey, Lucy did actually successfully hit a good deep return. And you could actually hear it in the, the, the absorb the ball more. Um, and then you got it almost like a positive encouragement before the next point. It's not going to automatically lead to a good result, but it just sounds better. Telling herself again what to do versus what not to do pre-planning what to do with the serve. Gosh, kidding. Good surface one. And again, you can just hear the difference in the tones, the mannerisms when they're actually speaking to each other, uh, you know, to themselves while they're playing points. Um, so that's basically what, what this unique feature is. It's, I understand a lot of people, you know, a lot's been made recently about whether or not coaching should be allowed on tour um, or for high level tennis players. This basically blends two different skills. It blends in real time, not what a coach thinks a student should be saying, um, but visually you buy videotaping, which I'm a firm believer in, it blends the idea of auditory how are they speaking themselves what's their self-talk when they're competing what i want them to be saying and what they're actually saying in real time could be to totally the opposites so we developed some key trigger words i'll go back to the uh you know my powerpoint here um you know basically here are i'm not i'm not if you're not doing something well, I'm not. I'm a firm believer in not always sounding positive. You're allowed to reprimand yourself on what you did, but what are you doing after the fact? Are you telling yourself what to do or what not to do um, in between points? Also, a big, big component that I'm, I'm firmly on, uh, playing a lot of doubles and playing some team events because you have a second person. You know, you're on an island by yourself. You're trying to fend off, 
the, whether they're inner demons or what's going on. And my point is, if you could have a, a you know, teammate or in a team situation, you have somebody encouraging them, a firm believer in having that done. And one of the last things I wanted to talk about is, you know, when you're doing this and when you're analyzing this, make sure that you give people time to digest. Don't do it immediately after the fact. It's still in real time to them. It's still fresh on their mind. Make sure they're able to digest it. Have some targeted goals. Um you know, maybe 15, 20 minutes, digest what happened in a match and an actual occurrence. You could just gotten beaten because somebody just played better than you. Or do you still have positive self-talk about the way you performed personally based on how you've been growing into, you know, with what you've been working on with your students? So I call it a unique feature. I mean, the the, um, the device I use is called a Tascam, uh, Tascam mic. Um, I'm videotaping people. I also created a little bit of... Uh, I created an article here on controlling the tempo, um, controlling what you can control in matches, and how to navigate it. Um, if anybody has any questions on this, feel free to give me a call back. But I, again, it's kind of a unique fe feature that I found in real time. I actually use this more from uh, some football players and some baseball players. And I wondered if they were being, when they were, you know, hot mic and the helmet cam and whatnot, are they actually talking the same way they'd be talking in live competition? Or are they doing it just because they know they have a microphone on? Well, what I want them to be saying to themselves and what they're actually saying, this kind of blends it. Uh, and so when you're watching and you're analyzing with a video, you know, so, so some of the girls that and some of the students that I've actually worked with that are doing this actually get a little embarrassed on the way you got to get, you know, give them time to grow into this, but they're a little embarrassed on the way they feel, the what they're saying to themselves, the way they're reprimanding themselves. And the idea as a coach is you're trying to get better each day. You're trying to make kids 1% better every day. So if they can improve upon this aspect, it doesn't automatically mean that they're going to get better results, but I know they're going to feel better about themselves because they feel like they're improving on something that they know needs some work. Uh, if anybody has any questions, feel free to reach out to me um, in regards to this. But I hope this is find this you find this very useful. Um, again, it's fairly unique. It's not foolproof. I get it. So any constructive feedback that somebody might have when viewing this. I would greatly appreciate it, but I felt that it was worthy of a uh, submission. Um, and I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks. Take care.